When the B&L Railroad started as the nation's first railroad, it went west from Baltimore. And they operated that way for uh, many years until uh, around the uh, 1880s when they realized there was, they had competition, namely the Pennsylvania Railroad. In time, the people who ran the b &O Railroad realized that there was a large market of travelers also going east from Baltimore. And the Pennsylvania Railroad and its affiliates really had the corner on that market, and the b &O came to realize, we'd like to have some of those passengers. As the b &O got involved in uh, an eastern expansion coming towards Philadelphia and New York, uh, like many mergers, they at first were very friendly with the Pensy. They were friendly with a lot of local railroads. And as the uh, competition got heavier, uh, they ultimately got squeezed out. They thought they were going to buy the right-of-way of the PWB, which would get them all the way from Baltimore up to uh, Philadelphia. However, the Pensy, Pennsylvania Railroad, uh, in a sneak attack, went out and bought the controlling interest in the railroad and just shut them out 100%. So in the 1880s, they began to uh, acquire land and rights of way, and they decided to build a railroad from Baltimore to Philadelphia and then to New York so that they could get their share of the East Coast trade. At the same time, they hired the East Coast, and in some ways, the United States uh, premier railroad architect, Frank Furness. Lots of people answer questions these days with he was in the right place at the right time, and quite frankly, he was. He was an architect from Philadelphia at a time when the U.S. Uh, growth and industry and expansion was, it, it must have been really exciting to be in those days. Uh, Furness came out of the Civil War. Uh, to date, he's the only architect of note to have ever won the Congressional Medal of Honor. The B&O's plan was to have frequent stations along the way so that people could have easy access to railroad and that all these stations would stimulate suburban-like development in those areas. So with all those state, uh, plans for all those stations, they needed a lot of designs. And so they hired Frank Furness to do that. Furness developed about eight prototype designs that were used and adapted along the way. And so there's a lot, there were a lot of Frank Furness stations between Baltimore and Philadelphia, some of which were in Delaware. This is the Water Street Station, which was a combination of a freight office and a passenger station. When you look at a Furness building, it's what he does with a roof line. And it, we can almost see it here, but there are five distinct pieces of that roof line. There's this western end, including the little two-story stair tower, and then there's an indented piece, and then there's a broader piece, and then there's a single-story piece on the end. There's really five of them. All of the roofs get truncated in one direction or another. That's the first thing about him. If you look at that chimney up there, that is the original 1887 chimney, and you can see how sculptural it is at the top. Even with the little slots in the side and the brickwork, everything had a decoration to it. The other thing Furnace did, you, you can stand here and count the number of different windows in this building. You know, just real quickly, one, two, three, four, five, six, a bay window, I mean, just, incredible variety to all these architectural details, which have function of getting light into the building, but they also make the building just look really interesting. The main B&O station in Wilmington was at Delaware Avenue and Pot Streets. Unfortunately, that station has been lost. As you can see from the images in the exhibit, it was a very interesting building. Today, there is an Acme supermarket on the site, so that will help you to uh, make the connection between the station and the site. Furnace designed it in what was called the shingle style, which was a sort of a uh, low-lying style. There were a lot of shingles involved, uh, lots of interesting lines in the building. One thing that's unusual about this station is that it is, I believe, the first station in the country where the uh, passengers entered the station on ground level, then went upstairs inside the station to get up to the trains. 
So the B&O stopped passenger service through Delaware in 1958. That's the time when passenger service in this country on all rail lines was pretty much collapsing. And the station was torn down soon after that. Uh, he also designed a few other buildings in Delaware that weren't train stations, correct? Yes. Uh, the uh, Security Trust, which is up at 5th and Market Street, uh, that it was built in uh, two or three different stages. Uh, the building still exists. It's now Kumba Academy. He did a library down in uh, uh, Newcastle, the Octagon. That's still standing. There is a much renovated building he did out at the University of Delaware. He developed America's first architectural style. Later on, you had people like Frank Lloyd Wright, who also designed a style. Wright designed a prairie style. You know, anytime you see a Frank Lloyd Wright building, you know it's his because it looks that way, even though there are variations to it. Furnace was very imaginative and uh, really very original.